Um, if I go into vehicle, um, it's gonna give me some different uh, options here to dial in some of the features that I need to do. Uh, in fact, if I go back to this section here, um, this menu button lets me see a few different things. For instance, if I had my navigation going, it would show me my navigation points. Um, but you can also see your lane keep assist, your tension level, and your all-wheel drive, how that's behaving, uh, and your tire pressures in each location. Um, so what's cool about this over here is this information used to be in the center for a lot of the Kias, but now you have a much um, more identifiable program, which is really neat. Um, so like if I go to driver assist features, um, I can either have uh, like a couple things selected or not. Um, so like if I select this one, the auto curve slowdown, it automatically decelerates at a highway curve zone. So that's something um, some people really like. Um, I know the person who's buying this car probably won't. I'm gonna leave that off. But the driving assist, uh, assist uh, in a highway according to the set speed and distance of the leading vehicle while keeping the vehicle centered in the lane. Leading vehicle meaning the car in front of you. I'm gonna leave that on for now. If uh, they want, they can change it. I'll show them where. Um, then warning timing. Right now it is normal. Um, late might be a little less annoying. So if, if, if you feel like your uh, driver assistance warning is going off too often, you can change that. Uh, you can also change the warning volume. You can change um, the driver attention warning um, to a couple different things. Leading vehicle departure alerts, really cool. Um, let me see if it'll tell me. So it notifies the driver when the leading vehicle drives away. So that's really nice if you ever catch yourself maybe looking at something like a sunset or whatever while you're at a stoplight uh, and then all of a sudden traffic's moving and you didn't realize it. Uh, that's actually going to alert you so that it does before someone behind you honks, right? Which is pretty cool. Inattentive driving warning uh, warns the driver of inattentiveness, inattentiveness. That will come on basically, like especially if you're on the highway and you're using all your driver assistance features, like the link keep assist and the uh, smart cruise control, and then you're not really giving it any driver inputs to the steering wheel, uh, it will think that you're not there and it will make some adjustments for you. You've got forward safety. Uh, so right now I've got active assist on, meaning it's going to help you avoid a collision. Um, so it'll first alert you and then if it doesn't, uh, if you don't break, it will break for you. Lane safety. Uh, this is a lean uh, keep assist. You can turn all this off if you want, but this is pretty cool. In fact, there's a fast button for that right here. If you want, you can turn that on um, or off by hitting that fast button. Uh, but what this does, and you saw that little steering wheel pop up next to the little car I mentioned earlier. What this does is it actually follows the lean. So if there's a curve in the road, that sort of thing. Um, blind spot safety, uh, you have an active assist. That means it's actually going to not only let you know if someone's there, but also assist in uh, collision avoidance by uh, providing a warning um, when that's detected. So that's really cool. The safe exit assist as well um, lets you know, basically if there's a car coming, uh, it'll tell you like, be careful uh, before you exit the vehicle. Parking safety, I feel like that should be in parking safety, but whatever. Um, but rear cross traffic safety just lets you know when uh, someone's driving in the lanes uh, through the parking lot when you're backing up. So that's a really nice assistant, but you can dial a lot of that in uh, there. Climate, um, you can change some of the automatic ventilation, the defrost options are sometimes automatic. Um, and here, the headlights uh, delay, you can turn that off if you want. You can change when the doors lock in here. Um, instrument cluster, you can change some of this stuff too, like your service interval. Here's where you'd set that. You can enable it, set the distance, set the uh, duration, and get all that taken care of. Oh, in there, uh, there's a welcome sound too. This plays a little tone when you uh, turn the car on or off. If you hate that, you can turn it off. Um, I don't want to reset it. I was trying to get convenience. A um, couple things here too you can turn off if you don't really care for it is like rear occupant alert. But it's kind of nice. To let, it lets you know, hey, check your back seats if it feels like someone has gotten back there. It uses um, uh, pressure, I believe, to, to identify that. In your sound. You can dial in a bunch of things. You can change the location, obviously. If you go to volume, it tells you uh, here in system sound, you can change the beep volume. You can change the voice prompts and the navigation. If you feel like the navigation is too quiet, which I do at 20, I usually have mine pretty turned up, um, but it just depends on what you wanna do. Phone projection. 
For your Android Auto, uh, same deal. You can change your media volume and your voice guidance volume. Um, media would be like your music, voice guidance would be like your directions on your nav. And then you have a few more options with the Android Auto to dial it in how you need. Um, advanced, I think gives you, yeah, you've got the dynamic speed compensation in tone, then you can dial all this in. I'm gonna flatten that for them. Um, but you can dial in how you want your uh, things to sound. Um, priority. Um, you can make navigation priority over a uh, phone call if you want and a couple other options there. Um, and then your actual nav volume, um, you can you can change some of those options as well. Um, cool. So if I go back home here, so, um, let me play with this because this is cool. So you've got uh, a mood lamp here. You've got a couple different options um, to, to really play with, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you'd see these mood lights um, change. It's a little bit um, too light outside for us to see um, like these color themes. Uh, there's another thing where it'll kind of uh, dance around for us. Um, right now, it's kind of hard to see. Um, if I go back to the menu here, let me. So I mentioned um, you can change your widgets. So if you hit menu, Edit home widgets. So instead of being map, road, uh, radio, or weather, you can put a clock in, you can put the driving info in. So you just click and hold. Um, yeah. It's telling me right here. <laughs> uh, press and hold and then drag it into the desired position, right? There we go. It was I wasn't pushing and and, and holding long enough before uh, trying to swipe. Um, so you can kind of dial some of those uh, options in, which is cool. Uh, back to this guy. Uh, mentioned a lot of the features over there. You do have hands-free options too. This is like so I can be like uh, give me directions to Six Flags Great America, and it will populate that either through the map or if I have my Android Auto or Apple CarPlay put in. This is to accept incoming phone calls, hang up on incoming phone calls, change the the presets, so it's not gonna go through every channel, but through your preset channels on the radio mode, or if you have your a Apple CarPlay or whatever plugged in, uh, it'll change through each individual track. But mode will change through like your AM, FM, satellite, and your phone, and then obviously uh, voice controls. A lot of your AC controls are pretty straightforward here. Um, you can hit auto and it'll kind of automatically do things. You can program that as well, uh, so you can set what that auto program is. Uh, and then up here, um, map, pulls up the actual map, whereas nav then pulls up that navigation menu. So they're two different things. This is where you might you know, want to go in for something more specific, whereas if you just want the map hanging out, you can hit map. If you just want to see your car while you're driving around. This is a custom button. So you can set this to be a couple different things. For instance, like display on off. Um, now this is my display on off button because before like this power button just turns the music off. Uh, but now if I want the whole thing to just die, uh, and, and be off, that's my power button. I'm gonna reset this to being nothing so that the owner can change what he wants this to be. Um, but that's what that does. And then obviously um, radio media, media is gonna be like your Bluetooth or, or phone plugged in, radio is gonna be your radio. And then setup is that same little um, circle that I showed you earlier on how to do some stuff right there. So that's uh, the majority of what's going on in this car. Uh, obviously, I haven't talked about the uh, Apple CarPlay, or I mean the um, the Uvo yet. Yeah, I'll get to that. In fact, that's some of this up here. Um, so you've got your passenger airbag uh, that you can turn on and off. Um, but right here uh, is an info button, kind of useless. That would be like your points of interest if you had that set up. Again, probably won't use it. This is really cool. Uh, when your phone's plugged in, it'll you can hit this button and call roadside assistance if you need to. Then obviously your controls for the lights and uh, for the um, sunroof. Pretty cool, right?